My name is Father Tom Hagen. I'm an oblate priest, and I now live and work here in Haiti. I've lived here now for 12 years. This is the Cité Soleil. This is one of the older areas. One half of the children, 50% of them, will die before their fifth birthday. The children stay up at night. At least one boy has to stay up at night with a stick because the rat population is 10 times that of the people. I remember sitting in my office and getting a phone call from Tom, and he said, Doug, I, I'm standing here and I just can't believe what I'm seeing. And he paused and it was quiet for a minute, and he said, the, the people here in this area of Fort Dimanche where the prison is, he said, Doug, they're, they're mixing up mud with sugar and salt and they're making patties out of it and they're, and they're putting on the concrete and they're baking that and they're giving that to the children to eat because nothing else. And I didn't believe them. Well, what we're looking at here are mud patties that are made from dense mud, sometimes lined in the sewage canals, and they're mixed with butter and salt sometimes some sugar, and they're formed into these patties and they bake them in the sun. And they're, they're a small little business. They're sold for, for pennies and uh, people eat them. The mud patties are still there. What I didn't realize at that time either was the mud patties are filled with dangerous parasites, parasites that would, would, would really kill their children. But they are still making them and still feeding them uh, to the children. In every one of our campuses, we have eight campuses the preschool, the, 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 these are preschool one, two, and three are very young, so they don't have to walk too far. We try to keep them in every school. The older kids sometimes have to go greater distances, like the fourth and fifth grade. Here we have the gray uniforms are the high school kids. This is the first year we had trouble with clothes. A lot of the kids could not come to school because they had no clothes. The kids in those classrooms are born into a world where you and I would not be caught dead. Their nightmares are real. They're hungry all the time. And it's just, if nothing else, to see them be able to walk through those gates and go into those safe classrooms away from gunfire, away from the sewer pits, away from the disease and the bacteria that, that they get when they eat the garbage from the, the, the piles that are all over the place. So it's a, it's a good and, and a, a solid thing that we're doing to get those kids out of those conditions. They go home at night and sleep on the ground when it rains, they sleep in mud. Uh, rats come in at night, bite the infants, they, they get infected, and um, it's a tough place. And uh, our hope is that these schools are bringing a little bit of peace, a little bit of comfort and love into the lives of kids who live in a, in a, in a, in a place as close to hell as we can, we can imagine.
kitchen here does about 4,000 meals a day. It's one of the two kitchens we have. The women come early in the morning. Uh, they, they prepare, the, the beans take a little longer. So by around nine o'clock, the food's ready and it's carried out to the eight, to five of the schools. Our other kitchen supplies the other three schools. Uh, there's a team of about 12 women and uh, I, I think by and large, they do a good job. If 13 burners going full speed from early morning, they, they go through this four or five times, they'll boil these large things of rice, the sauce and the stew is over there, and the beans are in here, if you see them here. They'll empty it when it's done into these plastic drums, and it'll just, it's distributed to all the different campuses, and as soon as it comes off, you have another batch of rice that's soaking over here, and that'll go on the fire and cook it up. You got butter, you have spices, bouillon, salt, pepper, rice, beans. Okay. Okay, over here we have our sauce, vegetables, garlic, tomato paste, spices, sometimes there's carrots, some fish, and special occasions, different parties and all, we'll have some chicken and things. Haiti has a lot of, lot of problems, and um, I, 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 for one, could never uh, stand up publicly and say, well, this, this would be it, this would be the answer, this would really help Haiti. I think it comes back to uh, a certain spirituality that uh, keeps us going. And I keep going back to what Mother Teresa of Calcutta once said. She said, don't give in to the temptation that you are not doing something significant about this world of ours. Don't feel overwhelmed by what you see or hear. Just make a resolution that the next person who comes into your space will walk away a little better and a little happier. If you think too big, you're just gonna be overwhelmed. If you think small, if you can think, okay, the next child we meet, we'll try to do something for her or him. Oh, <laughs> la